Hello again, grade 12 students, and welcome to our third lecture. This lecture's theme is environmental issues, and the lesson is called Climate 101 Deforestation. So obviously this, uh, this lesson is going to talk about the causes and the effects of deforestation. Uh, just by taking a quick look at this picture depicted here, you can see the dire consequences of, uh, of deforestation or cutting down trees. Imagine how this little uh, piece of land used to be before all of those trees you see here were cut down. Obviously, it was, it was a forest. So let's take a look at... Okay, it's lesson two in your book. Climate 101 Deforestation, written by Christina Nunes, and I got this article from National Geographic. Take a look at the picture here. This was obviously Photoshop, but a very, very famous picture. These are the lungs, symbolizing the lungs of the earth, which are the forests. What ha what's happening to them? Look at what humans have done. They, have, they are cutting away, taking away the lungs of the earth, which are the filters and, and oxygen providers of our planet. Let's read the blurb. Forests cover about 30% of the planet's land mass, but humans are cutting them down, clearing these essential habitats on a massive scale. Massive means huge. What is deforestation? Find out the causes, effects, and solutions. So from the blurb, we know that this is going to talk about causes, effects, and possible solutions to this issue. Paragraph one, as the world, as the world seeks, looks for, to slow the pace, the speed of climate change, preserve wildlife, and support billions of people, trees inevitably hold a major part of the answer. Yet the mass destruction of trees, deforestation, continues sacrificing the long-term benefits of standing trees for short-term gain. When I'm cutting down this 100-year-old tree just to make a little piece of furniture, it, this is short-term, but what, what am I losing in the long-term? I am losing this very essential, uh, this very essential element of our earth. Moving on. Forests still cover 30%, about 30% of the world's land area, but they are disappearing at an alarming uh, rate. Surprising, alarming, surprising in a, in a scary way. Between 1990 and 2016, the world lost 502,000 square miles, or equivalent to 103 million square kilometers of forest, according to the World Bank, an area larger than South Africa. Since humans started cutting down trees, 46% of trees have been felled, cut down, according to a 2015 study in the journal Nature. About 17% of the Amazonian rainforest has been destroyed over the past 50 years, and losses recently have been on the rise. If you've been listening to the news lately, and even on social media, we see what's happening to the Amazon uh, what happened last year was pretty tragic. The fires that were purposely started in order to clear this land for farms and for construction and other businesses. Paragraph three, we need trees for a variety of reasons, not least of which is that they absorb not only the carbon dioxide that we exhale, exhale give off, but also the heat-trapping greenhouse gases that human activities emit or give off. As those gases enter the atmosphere, remember, when the trees take out, okay, take away, absorb those greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and others, but when trees are cut, what happens? These greenhouse gases which trap heat, this is their issue, they trap heat and they keep it in the atmosphere, global warming, okay, is sped up. Global warming increases. Now, this is a subtitle. Subtitles are used in order to 
categorize or organize an article to make your job as a reader easier. Four, causes of deforestation. So obviously in this part, the author is going to talk about causes of deforestation. Farming, grazing of livestock, mining, and drilling combined account for more than half of all deforestation. So those are the causes, the reasons why people cut trees. Forestry practices, wildfires, and in a small part, urbanization account for the rest. Urbanization means um, increasingly becoming city-like, building cities. In order to build cities, what do you have to do? Take a look at an area like Khosh. Several of, uh, of you probably live there. What was Al Khosh like 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? It was just full of trees. Okay, even when I moved here uh, 20 years ago, when I got married, everything, everywhere around me, it was trees. But look at it now. All of it is full of buildings. Where are the trees? Where have the trees gone? Why have they gone? Because of urbanization. It's becoming increasingly a city and no longer a countryside. Okay, so let's start reading here. In the Amazon, cattle ranching and farms, particularly soy, you know, the soybean, are key culprits, culprits, criminals. One of the reasons why so much of the Amazon is being cut is to make farms for soybeans which which is a very popular uh, type of bean nowadays but as a result we're losing our forests paragraph five logging operations what does logging mean cutting down trees logging a log means a piece of wood which provide the world's wood and paper products of course the paper we write on is made of wood also fell countless trees fell cut this word here means cut each year. Loggers, those who cut wood, some of them acting illegally, of course. Much of what's happening of deforestation, much of deforestation is illegal, of course, against the law. Also build roads to access more and more remote forests, far away forests, which leads to further deforestation. Forests are also cut as a result of growing urban sprawl as land is developed for homes, like the, uh, like the case of al Hosh we talked about, and many other uh, countryside areas in Lebanon. Paragraph 6. Not all deforestation is intentional, done on purpose. Not all of it is done on purpose. Some is caused by a combination of human and natural factors like wildfires, this is and has become an issue recently in Lebanon. Last year, Lebanon was basically on fire. Many of its forests were burning and overgrazing when the cattle, the goats and sheep and, uh, and cows are let, let out in the forest and they start grazing. They eat everything. Okay, that's, that's also one kind, which may prevent the growth of young trees. What do the, the cattle, what do they graze? Of course, the small trees, the saplings. What happens? We lose this baby tree because of overgrazing. Next, another subtitle. The first subtitle was about the causes. Another subtitle is why it matters and what can be done. Obviously, the effects and what can be done, the solutions. Deforestation affects the people and animals where trees are cut, as well as the wider world. Some 250 million people living in forest and savanna areas depend on them for sustenance and income. Many of them among the world's rural poor. Rural is the opposite of urban. Rural areas are the countryside areas. 80% of Earth's land animals and plants live in forests. You cut the trees, you will lose the rare tigers, the orangutans, and many other types of monkeys, many beautiful rare species of birds. You might lose a plant that holds a cure for cancer or another disease. So these forests hold 80% of this plant and wildlife. Removing it will remove all of those. 
it means that the tiger or this rare plant or this rare bird is endangered and might become extinct, no longer exists. Paragraph eight, yet the effects of deforestation reach more, much further. So farther. So there's much more to it. The South American rainforest, for example, South America, like Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, influences regional and perhaps even global water cycles. And it's key to the water supply in Brazilian cities and neighboring countries. The Amazon actually helps furnish water to some of the soy farmers and beef ranchers who are clearing the forest. The loss of clean water and biodiversity from all forests could have many other effects we cannot foresee, predict, touching even your morning cup of coffee. Imagine guys uh, reaching a time where coffee beans become extinct or we can no longer plant them because of issues related to deforestation. Nine, in terms of climate change, so this is another result, cutting trees both adds carbon dioxide to the air and removes the ability to absorb existing carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide increases because the trees who that should be absorbing them are gone. Okay, paragraph 10, the numbers are grim. Grim means miserable scary but many conservationists see reasons for hope look at the difference between this paragraph and this paragraph i'll ask you about this this is talking about the miserable and dire situation but here paragraph 10 has an opposing idea the numbers are grim but many conservationists those who uh, care about the environment and want to conserve it or keep it see reasons for hope so this is a, a contrasting idea. A movement is underway to preserve or keep existing forest ecosystems and restore, bring back, lost tree cover. Organizations and activists are working to fight illegal mining against the law and logging. Okay, etc. So here we see a glimpse of hope in those um, organizations stated here, trying to bring back what was lost. Paragraph 11, for consumers, it makes sense to examine the products and meats you buy, looking for sustainability or sustainably produced sources when you can. Nonprofit groups such as the Forest Stewardship Council and the Rainforest Alliance certify products that consider they consider sustainable, while the World Wildlife Fund has a palm oil scorecard for consumer brands. So be careful what you eat. You eat too much meat, you are, uh, you are in, in a way, uh, you, you are making people cut more trees, not you, you and everybody, okay? They are going to cut more trees in order to build more farms. Farms are a major culprit, okay? Where cattle are raised, where different, where different uh, livestock is raised, they, they have to cut huge, huge, uh, parts of the land. Okay, let's begin with the exercises now, which are found on page 24 of your ebooks. We're going to answer one, two, four, and just those, okay? Number one, what do the statistics in paragraph two reveal about the situation with forests around the world? Explain. One, the statistics in paragraph two show that forests are being destroyed at an alarming rate, surprisingly scary. To illustrate between 1990, so I want to, to say why I said this. I want to explain, so I need an example to illustrate between 1990 and 2006, 1.3 million square kilometers of forests have been destroyed. Moreover, I'm, I'm giving another example. Moreover, 17% of the Amazon forest has been destroyed in the last 50 years. Two, according to paragraph three, what makes trees essential? 
uh, not only, according to paragraph three, not only do trees absorb the CO2 that we exhale, but they absorb, they also absorb the heat trapping greenhouse gases that cause global warming. Number four, by referring to paragraphs seven, eight, and nine, name two major effects of deforestation, elaborate on their impact. Two major effects of deforestation are loss of habitat for wild uh, plants and wild animals, such as the orangutans, also the, the tigers. It is estimated that 80% of the world's plants and land animals exist in the forest, therefore threatening their existence. When we cut the forest, they will be endangered. In addition, with the loss of trees, water cycle will be disturbed. South African rainforests help furnish water to many areas. Now, I gave a third one, but you are only asked to give two. Furthermore, when trees are cut, there will be more carbon dioxide in the air and less oxygen. The heat trapping gases will increase, resulting obviously in global warming. Let's move on. Okay, now to the organizational skills questions. Number one, why do you think the author uses subtitles in the text? Please be careful with this one. Uh, we haven't answered a lot of questions related to subtitles, so this is why I want you to be extra careful here and see how it is uh, answered, appropriately answered. The author uses subtitles in the text to organize her ideas and facilitate the reader's work. So when the reader reads it, they would find the text easier and uh, more flowing. For example, she uses the subtitle Causes of Deforestation to show the reader that this part of the article will discuss the causes of this issue. Then she uses the subtitle Why it matters and what can be done to show that this part will discuss the effects of deforestation and its impact on the environment and possible solutions to the issue why it matters and what can be done. Two, what is the thematic relationship between paragraphs nine and 10? Uh, I uh, displayed them here for you, nine and 10. Here, the author was obviously talking about the, the grim and dark situation that's taking place um, in terms of climate change, cutting trees both adds carbon dioxide to the air and removes the ability to absorb existing carbon dioxide, uh, etc. But in paragraph 10, the numbers are grim, but please, you need to spot those clue words, but many conservationists see reasons for hope. So obviously the relationship between paragraphs nine and 10 is one of idea contrast. Okay, the author here depicts a dark picture, but then he, uh, but then she says, there is reason for hope. Okay, and uh, she talks about the different organizations that are helping out in restoring trees and uh, preserving existing ones, etc. So the answer would be the thematic relationship between paragraphs 9 and 10 is one of idea contrast. In paragraph 9, the author shows the grim situation of deforestation and the resulting carbon emissions. In paragraph 10, the author talks about hope where a movement is underway to preserve existing forests and restores trees that were lost. She uses the word but to show contrast at the beginning of paragraph nine. Moving on, uh, number three, how the, why does the author rely so much on statistics? Just one answer. Anytime you get such a question, there is only a one sentence answer to it, and this is it here. The author relies so much on statistics to achieve credibility, objectivity, and authenticity. Full stop. Four, uh, what type of writing does the article belong to? Question number four. The article presents the causes and effects of deforestation and ways that could help mitigate or solve this issue or make it better if you want. The author's tone is objective, where she presents facts and statistics related to deforestation. Therefore, the article Climate 101 Deforestation is a type of informative writing. Okay? 
that's all for this lesson. Your homework, which will be, uh, of course, posted on the worksheet section in your app. I want you to reread pages 22 to 24 carefully. Okay, it means 22, 23, 24 answers C, exercises C, D, E, and F on pages 25 and 26. Don't forget to go back to the skills in the ebook in order to help you answer some of the questions. Um, for anything further, please write your questions and I will answer them on our next Zoom live meeting or you can contact me uh, through WhatsApp. See you and stay safe.